And my second guest today is Nancy Byrell from Peaceful Acres Horses. Nancy founded Peaceful Acres Horses in 2007, and since that time she's been working diligently in the horse rescue and retirement programs. Nancy also has her master's in social work, so she has combined programs in which she's helping people, children, women with cancer, veterans, to receive their healing through horses and helping horses to heal from abuse and neglect that they have suffered in their lifetimes. Welcome, Nancy. Great to be here again. It's so good to be with you. So great to have you always. I love you dearly. I love you too. I love the work that you're doing. <laughs> so Peaceful Acres Horses in Pattersonville, New York, uh, is doing some amazing things these days. Yeah. And I want to hear a little bit about, first and foremost, the rescue and retirement work that you are doing. And then we're going to talk about some of your equine-guided experiential learning programs. Okay. okay. Perfect. So tell me about the horses that you are rescuing. Where are they coming from? Oh, boy. You know, some of the horses have come from kill pens. So, you know, I would say about half of our horses have come um, two peaceful acres while they were on, you know, in a, in a kill lot or in an auction. And peaceful acres through our charitable contributors um, have been able to pay the bail, essentially is what it's called, um, at those auctions. And uh, we've brought several home to the sanctuary that way and have been able to get many of them placed um, some of them stay at the sanctuary their entire lives, you know, some of the horses that are in the kill pens are young and healthy and are placeable for adoption. Um, others are, you know, are pretty elderly or maybe they have some, some physical or emotional issues that uh, they make a really great sanctuary horse, but then they also turn around to make an incredibly amazing partner in our equine assisted therapy programs. So. Um, and then we have some horses that come from cruelty cases, unfortunately, mm. where we've partnered uh, or been hired by essentially the, the police or courts uh, to help them in holding the horses, which are to them considered evidence. And so we become what is unfortunately classified as evidence impound um, for horses. And we've done that. Um, that's certainly the least favorite thing that we do at Peaceful Acres because sometimes the horses are in very poor condition um, by the time the police get there. Other times it's just a long drawn out process so it takes a lot out of our organization um, to do that work mm -hmm. you know and plus it's a court case it's it's not a happy thing you know if you rescue a horse from from a kill pen you you feel like oh my gosh we literally saved that horse within 24 hours of them being shipped to slaughter and you get home with a trailer and you just go Whoa, look what we did what we did team. it and what a great team it was right. to do it because it starts with you know working with our colleagues to know who's in the kill pens working with our donors to know you know who can contribute to get them out and uh, and who's going to be the volunteers um, to help to restore them and, and bring them in. So, you know, that's a really amazing team effort. And, but you know, I think the horses that are most dear to me, um, when we get a call either from a veterinarian or from a person that either a family member has died of cancer or someone has a cancer diagnosis and they have a horse that has been their pride and joy, their best friend, their therapist, their everything, right? Um, and they're diagnosed with cancer um, or someone has passed and you know where is that horse going to go right. oftentimes these horses are teenagers or older um, so those are the horses that um, are at our place that I know um, that we're doing you know some angel work um, and I get to keep in contact with with the women that are um, fighting for their lives for cancer and I get to take pictures of their horses at the sanctuary you know with their buddies and in the green grass and let them and transition them. with peace knowing their horses yeah. are taken care of yeah. it is very heartbreaking I mean you see it with felines and dogs as well that you know when their their people parent passes on and now they're shipped into a, a, a well, shelter. Yeah, it's just hard. It's so very heartbreaking. I asked Diana this, so I'm going to ask you as well. Why horses? Oh my gosh. Um, and donkeys. You know, if my mother was here, she would say, you know, why horses? Because she told me I could not have a horse when I was a kid. <laughs> so now, you know, now I'm surrounded by <laughs> seventy of them. Um, 
So why horses? You know, horses, I say, saved my life. So I was going through some grief, loss, and trauma back in 2002, 2003. And I had four horses at the time. And I had a social work degree from Siena College, my bachelor's. At the time, I was wondering why is it when I was out in the barn, uh, when I was grooming them, when I was feeding them, when I was doing things, not only in the stable and with the horses, but also out in nature. So whether it was sunshiny, rainy, or cold, it was doing something. Uh, to help me to, as I call it, surpass those things. Mm -hmm. So as I started to feel better, my anxiety was reducing, my depression was reducing, I was feeling more stable in this stable place, I decided to look into, you know, what is this? Um, with a social work background, I wanted to find out, you know, I was, was interested. So I found the Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association out in Utah. And uh, I picked up the phone, I called my mom once again, you know, who's been involved with horses with me since uh, I was young, and said, how about we go out to Arizona? They were doing a training, and she said, what are we going to do? I said, you're going to golf, and I'm going to do this training in equine-assisted psychotherapy and learning, because I want to know more about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came back, I continued to work my job in construction, doing commercial construction and, and management of that for about a year. And um, I took a layoff at the company that I was working for. I uh, went back and got my master's degree in social work. And uh, I said, I committed myself to say, I'm going to open my stable to become a stable place that people can come. However, they're going to come. Mm -hmm. They're going to get that energy of the horse, um, that, that empathy that these, these horses, as Diana was talking about, they're prey animals. Right. Uh, they're the most empathetic, understanding, mirroring being uh, that I've ever, you know, had the honor to know. I was going to say that, and my understanding is the equine therapy is mirroring program, and so with that, the horses are also receiving comfort and learning comfort and trust mm -hmm. from the humans and the humans from the horses. Is that the oh, way that absolutely. program works? Okay. You know, Melissa Maria, one of the <laughs> things that I, I think for our volunteers, and of course our volunteers will watch this program and our, our staff will watch it, all of us know that we come to the horses at the sanctuary for a reason. You know, yes, it is to give of ourselves and our time um, and care for something else. But by giving to them and caring for them, we're actually healing. We're actually improving. You know, uh, socially, emotionally, physically, spiritually, in every aspect, the whole person is, is recovering and surpassing whatever it is that is holding them back because we're learning from the horses. If they have abuse in their past or they have neglect in their past, they, they're letting it pass. Um, and we can do that as well. I would think that right through the horses, uh, one will become more self-aware. Mm -hmm. And through that more self-awareness, they'll might start receiving some of that emotional healing Absolutely. that they desperately need. And they might not even know that they needed. They, they knew maybe something was wrong. But um, it's just beautiful. Now, you have several retreats coming up. You do. Tell me first what the retreats are and then the dates of those retreats, please. Okay. So my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer a while back, and so were some of my best friends. And um, back in 2007, we did a, a fundraiser for a friend, planned it in about three weeks. And this was actually before Peace Lakers Horses was even a 501c3. And there was a bunch of women, and we said, you know what, we've got to do something for this mom and her daughter who have cancer. Let's do something. And we raised a bunch of money but, and get, was able to give it to them so they could pay their, some of their bills, right? So they could focus on their healing. Mm -hmm. And then my mother was diagnosed, and other friends were diagnosed. And Susan G. Coleman had some grants that were coming up. So we reached out and put a, a retreat program together and we reached out to Susan G. Komen and we had gotten funded. And so in 2010, we started doing these rejuvenation wellness retreats for women with breast cancer. Mm. And then we had lost our funding uh, because it's very difficult to get grants. But I it didn't want that program to go away because the remarks that came from the women at the end of the program of how beneficial it was to be there with the horses, to be there with each other, to be there with the facilitators who were doing, you know, Reiki and chakra work and um, equine guided experiential learning and massage and just 
it's a beautiful setting mm -hmm. too. You know, we've got 156 acres and it's gorgeous. You've been there. It's a beautiful piece beautiful. of land. Yes. So I didn't want that program to go away. And so I reached out to my facilitators who are also my friends and some of them are cancer survivors. And I said, what do you think about doing it this year even though we didn't get funded? And they said, okay, let's do it. And so we put it together, and some women that can't afford to come, I've got started with some scholarship funding Great. and working with some Great. some businesses and some philanthropic people, even some like some of the people that are giving are survivors themselves, and so they're paying the tuition for another woman to come. It's beautiful. Oh. You Beautiful. know, um, I love that. What are the dates, Nancy? The date, the first one is July 18th, so next Saturday. Next Saturday. And I think we still have two openings for that. Okay. Um, we also have one August 22nd, and yesterday we just booked our third one because we're getting interest, you know, we're filling up. So October 3rd will be our last one for this year. And um, it's just a one day. You know, mm -hmm. we've done two and a half day retreats in the past. But this way, we can build on that. And we do a one-day retreat, and especially if women are in treatment, doing two days is just too much. It's a lot for them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. some of the women that are coming are receiving treatment. Some women have just completed treatment. Some have been survivors for years. Some of the women that are facilitators are survivors. And some of the women who are coming to volunteer to help with you know, the food and where do I go, because it's a big place, um, you know, where's the yurt, where's the pavilion, you know, where are the bathrooms? Um, there's women who are survivors that are going to be helping with that. And what I also love about this is when we were funded by Susan G. Komen, I would get um, emails from women that had cancer or had had cancer, but it wasn't breast cancer. And I had to say they couldn't come mm. because our funding was specifically to serve women um, who had had breast cancer or had breast cancer. So now, it's any woman who has been told that they have cancer or may have cancer. Mm. You know, I've gone through you know, biopsies a few different times, and just going through that process, it's scary. It's very stressful. Scary. It's stressful so too, yeah. the retreats are designed to just right. give the ladies, um, it's an all about them, rest, Great. rejuvenate, and have horse hugs day. Wonderful. Yeah. You also have, I want to touch on briefly before we wrap up, uh, you also work with soldiers uh, with post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. The horses work with the soldiers. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, you know, we had a program that we were doing for veterans, and we still do. Um, we've changed it a little bit, and this is even since the last time that we had talked with you. Um, Peaceful Acres has to make some decisions as to where is our primary focus going to be. And cancer is you know, most near and dear to my heart and also to the hearts of some of our board members and mentors. Veterans certainly are too. Veterans, it has been very difficult to find money. Um, although there was veterans that wanted to come to program, the veterans organizations did not have the money for it. Okay. And it's very difficult for me to fundraise for feeding the horses and also for the veterans. Mm. So instead, we're doing a fun field trip program. I don't have to fundraise, and they don't either. So now it's really awesome because I can reach out to other organizations that serve veterans and say, hey, Peaceful Acres has fun free Fridays. Come see the horses. Come spend some time at our place. Do a barbecue. Bring your own lunch. Have a picnic spend a few hours. Some of our contributors are donating into that field trip program. What that does is it allows the veteran to not have to go into another therapy program, but they get to just come and have some peaceful time at the ranch. Enjoy the horses. Which is therapeutic within itself. It's beautifully therapeutic without saying we're going to set goals and objectives and let's fix something. Absolutely. And so in that, I, I really felt strongly in there are some incredible veterans programs and and Diana had touched on this too there's a couple up in Saratoga and I knew that it was for three years I had been trying to fundraise for that program and I needed to stop mm -hmm. and I needed to figure out a way to open up those stable doors for free to the veterans 
And so that's what we've done. And the Fun Free Fridays are sponsored by the Golub Foundation and also by um, the DiLorenzo Law Firm, which is here in Schenectady. Uh, we've got a few other sponsors that I hope will come on Putting board. Putting some attorneys to good use. Got to put right. some attorneys to good use. Yeah, attorneys, call me. You know, you can <laughs> sponsor veterans or kids. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for everything that you are doing. Thank I mean, you, you do so much. Uh, it's just very impressive. I know you work very hard, Nancy. Thank you so much. I love what I do. Uh, yes, you do. It's <laughs> obvious. If you would like more information about Peaceful Acres Horses and all the work that they do, go online to PeacefulAcresHorses.com. Thank you, Nancy.